You're listening to Mammal Watching with Charles Foley and John Hall. You can find other episodes at mammalwatching.com slash podcast. This hobby turned into sort of a bucket list, of a big long bucket list of all the coolest animals that I'd want to go see all over the world. I took a safari to Kenya to get the whole thing started in, in uh, either 91 or 92. And, you know, so 30 some years later, uh, it's just been hundreds and hundreds of, of trips all over the world to see as much wildlife and get as many of these photos as I can. It's kept me very healthy mentally. It's kept me very healthy physically. I, I perpetually have something to look forward to. I have objectives uh, in my future that I'm training for, that I'm training my body for. I'm keeping myself in physical shape, hiking up and down mountains to do. Um, so it's been as much a philosophy of my life and a guiding principle as it has been a hobby. You know, this is why I get up in the morning. This is why I bother to go to work and my job seems tedious or stressful or something. So um, it's really just been who I am, what I am as a person over these years. It's been quite the obsession of late. I, and I've done some really dumb, crazy, reckless things to get, achieve it. But um, that is what makes the best story. So it's been a lot of fun. And there's there's a worldly education to be had in going to as many countries as any anyone who really gets into this hobby and seeing the different cultures and the people and even to uh, what I've really come to appreciate is when there's challenge in this and you go to some complete other corner of the planet from where you're from and you have a common goal with these people from a different culture, um, it, it, it's just a, such a healthy way to view the world and to, to meet other people. I have had five close run-ins with them over the years. I'm having way more luck with them than, than the animal that I'm usually trying to find for the Sumatran rhino. But I'm not having any hard time finding Sumatran tigers. So um, if you're interested, I could nearly get you killed as well. Um, I look over this side to get a judge of where, where it's at. I see just the back and shoulders of it coming up from like this hill towards the trail. You can see the little dent, the, the coloration again is there. There's nothing else up there in, in the whole area where what else it could be. De distinctly know the sound. It gets right to where I assume my scent is. And again, it switches into that quiet mode, turns down left and vanishes off into the trees. And um, I don't cry as a grown man very often, gentlemen. <laughs> like to think of myself as a tough guy that doesn't feel pain or anything. But man, four times being close to them, that time actually seeing the back of one. If you'd like to listen to the full episode, then visit mammalwatching.com slash podcast.